found in the music, in the dress, in the clothing, in the bazaar. It's almost as if one were sensory hungry, and that the hunger somehow in suburbia was not met. And it is my very definite opinion that until we find modalities of stimulating the young mind and body within either the school setting or in the community where they can feel a part of something, where something has meaning, where there's feedback from, say, adult to youth and youth to adult, that we're going to be missing the boat in any educational program. <laughs> so we're at St. Aidan's Winery in the Ferguson Valley. Delicious wines. Um, there was about 16 to try. I think we walked away buying a case. We got a free bottle and a free aerator for our expenditure. Uh, it wasn't that expensive though, to be fair. So they had about, I don't know, five or six wines to try in their um, white selection and then similar in their red. Um, delicious. I would say it's a good 80 to 90% success or positive um, note. <laughs> I'm just waving to our lovely lady who sold us all our, our wines. Um, she's driving a really flash car. Commission from my wine sale, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had about 16 wines for us to try. 80 to 85, possibly 90% success rate, I'd say. Beautiful range. And all their whites were a win for me. Simon's taking off in the background. All their win, uh, their, their whites were a winner, especially the bubbles. And the reds, I'm not, I'm more of a white wine drinker rather than a red wine drinker. So the reds were uh, like two of them, I think, maybe, that didn't really hit the note for me. Um, and then they had two sweet wines that didn't. So that's how they got the 90% kind of rating on how good they were. But really, they say that they're a hidden gem in the Ferguson Valley and they really are a hidden gem. Delicious, beautiful wines. Most of them have won awards. They've got like silver, gold medals on them. Um, so yeah, if you're definitely in the Ferguson Valley in... Um, I guess southwest of, the, of Perth and Western Australia. St. Aidan's is worth a stop. Now that everybody's gone, I'll give you a little bit of a tour if you can see behind. Might just be out of focus. There's our tent. There's Benita. And then you can just see that now everyone's gone. We've got the place to ourselves. We're so lucky. And behind me there, that's the lake. But what I thought you might want to see is this um, ablution block or whatever they call it. It's basically uh, amenities. Campus kitchen, Campus kitchen. I'm told it's Campus Kitchen. So. Uh, Come with me and let's have a little bit of a look, shall we? So it's a nice undercover area, quite modern. Uh, it's just a stone's throw from the lake, really. There you've got our campsite. That's just where we're setting up to heat our meals. Over there you've got people running away from the camera, as well as the toilet block, which isn't too far. And I must say, the amenities are very good here. Got a couple of benches where you can suitably, comfortably seat a lot of people if big camping parties is your, is your game. This is the first time I've actually been in here because it's been commandeered by loud people. Here you can see we've got a double, double head burner. Uh, I think it's wired into the gas, but it's a nice barbecue, good enough. Looks like it's seen a lot of action. Probably needs a bit of a clean, but that's one of the things you do when you're camping, isn't it? 
So no actual running water per se, but what they do have is these taps over here. If, uh, come with me. And what they have, it is running water. It is very useful, but you do need to boil it because I pretty much think it's pretty much straight out the lake. Uh, so you've got water, you can do your dishes, you can, I don't know, cook your cook your noodles, whatever you're doing. And uh, it, uh, it works out really well. It works out well for everyone, I think. Uh, the staff that have come to um, take the money from us and what have you, they have been really lovely, really, really nice people, very understanding of last night's um, debauchery, shall we say, and the, not on our end, obviously. And they're very understanding, very sympathetic. Now that it's Sunday, it's everyone's gone. So, just leaves Venetia and I in this large space here, which is really, really beautiful. And I think what makes it even more beautiful, aside from Venita, is the fact that we have got a rather tasty looking cheese board happening here. So we bought some cheeses from home, but those are sun-dried grapes that we got from St. Aidan's uh, to accompany the wine that we're about to drink. Is there anything you'd like to say about the wine, my darling? Oh, I'm getting ready to have a lovely little sip of that. Is this one, the first one, the white one's not from St. Aidan's though, it's from Green Door. Oh, that's, that's right. That's that one that is down the road from the brewery. Mm. Wild Bull. Wild Bull, yeah. And it had like a nice French door. Then they have a great big selection of wine. I think I was talking about it before when we stopped to photograph the St. Aidan's Church. I have a very big selection of wines, like maybe five in total. Yeah. And we bought a high-end price Chardonnay. But I hope it still tastes nice. Um, we're going to enjoy this last evening here tonight. We've got work again tomorrow, which really sucks. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> Look at that, that's the green door Chardonnay. And I can tell you that it's very good. Probably the best one that they had there, best in my opinion. There, for sure. Yeah, it was good, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. So we're going to be enjoying that. Give you a little rundown of it later on, perhaps. <laughs> Otherwise, just take a word for it. It's pretty nice. <laughs> pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. You can't really go wrong.